this step down. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna watch a movie. If you need to know the background of this movie, you probably don't want to know. Back in the 1970s, there were many, many social and political movements occurring in the U.S. about some serious issues. Blah, 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 blah. With the rise of awareness on these subjects spreading like wildfire, Senator Gaylord Nelson. Fuck you, millennial. I was born in the 80s. I could laugh at that. So that guy I previously mentioned created a special day to remind us all to be a little more conscientious about the environment called Earth Day. Fast forward 20 years into the future and a lot of good all that shit did. We're still screwing up the planet at an astronomical rate, consuming everything faster and more efficiently than ever, and Mother Earth has had enough. The only way to save her is by hiring a bunch of A-list actors to conduct a large-scale PSA that'll have you shutting off your television when not in use, and repeating the mantra of, if it's yellow, let it mellow. This is Time Warner's The Earth Day Special. The Earth Day Special. Brought to you by Time Warner. Vic! What the fuck? The show starts off with our main female character, Carla, a worn brake pad human hybrid played by Rhea headphone user warning Perlman as she tries to stun her prey through the wall with her voice. I mean, call for her husband Vic to join her in the living room on the couch and watch an Earth Day special. Wait a minute, you expect me to sit here and watch a TV show about nature? You got it. <laughs> I'm sorry, you got the wrong guy. Vic, played by her actual husband in real life and Neptunian Birdman, Danny DeVito, doesn't have any time for that shit as he's already late for a get-together with some friends. Victoria, please. So Carla does her magic on Vic, getting him to stay with her for some Channel 3 and chill. Great, great, great. What kind of a TV show? Here, I'm going to crack you a nice walnut here. Could be like a couple of squirrels here. The fuck was that? <laughs> what the fuck am I doing? What the fuck is she doing? What is she, a mimic? Friends. So the Earth Day special within the Earth Day special begins as the title card once again appears on screen now layered against a flyby of a Windows 98 screensaver as the booming voice of Barbara Streisand echoes throughout the darkness to sing about how rare and precious the miracle of life is. There's only one place in the entire universe where the miracle of life exists. Our own planet Earth. Life is so rare and precious. Look, I know it takes you eight minutes just to walk downstairs in your three-acre compound every morning for your everything bagel and grapefruit juice enema, so you might not have seen many people in your travels, but there's over seven billion of us on this rock. Rare and precious is more like cluttered and bland to me. As we go through re-entry without hitting the atmosphere because movie, the beginning credits roll in alphabetical order, listing most of the major talent sentenced to sell this masterpiece of made-for-TV cinema guest appearing in various skits that will interconnect and form episodic adventures of thought-provoking, challenging issues on the ecological state of our declining environmental health and awareness. Or it's in the order in which these actors' careers were relevant in a century. Through a cloud-covered crossfade into a crowded sidewalk, music plays in the background as a marching band turns the corner and heads down Main Street. Okay, you're right, it's nothing cool like that. We actually just get this really generic-ass sounding rally song from whatever high school band was available at the time, and I'm not sure which cheerleader blew which director of the project, but this scene goes on forever. Cool, it's got cartoons! And as if fated by the writers themselves, Porky Pig shows up out of nowhere to help Bugs Bunny with a map check. The 20th anniversary of Earth Day. Celebration? What do they got to celebrate? I was at the first Earth Day. If you ask me, people ain't learned nothing. Uh, apparently mentioning Earth Day sends Bugs Bunny into a genocidal rage. I live on the Earth. I oughta know. Pesticides, toxics, I tell you, these days, it's a shame. A rabbit like me has to wash his own carrot. Yeah, tasting whatever creature just shit-pissed or died on it. 
It's totally part of the experience. I hate carrots. It sure is cool they decided the animated character should show up in some out-of-the-way place from everyone else, but still be within view of the festivities to give us that sort of loose tie-in to what's going on previously. Who would want some sort of interaction between any of the A-list actors and popular cartoons to happen? Look! Look! Oh, hey, it's Tweety... B Ew! It's so hideously disproportionate! So as all the characters that were in the budget have shown up and cheaply danced around a bit for the kids, it's time for them to leave. This was a great place to live, till man set foot on it. Remember kids, this place would be a whole hell of a lot better if you guys didn't exist. Hey, I didn't say it. That was Bugs Bunny. Damn, Daniel! I don't give a fuck! It wasn't even a van. Fine. So who could this mysteriously new character on top of the hill be? Earth! What a concept! Yes! It's Robin Williams. What a wonderful thing Earth Day, friends! Yes, indeed! But hey, haven't we forgotten somebody here? Helen, come on! It's Robin Williams. Who paved this? The Little Beavers? I don't think so. I mean, who lit this square? It's Robin Williams. Come on, movie. Jesus Christ. Everybody that's ever watched television or saw a movie even once from the 90s knows what Robin Williams sounds like. He's not even really disguising his voice. He sounds like Robin Williams if Robin Williams spent a weekend in Alabama. Who makes this planet the show place of progress that it is? Man! Yeah! Okay, anyway, every man is here as our semi-sorta main protagonist of the movie. What I mean by that is he's seen throughout the film the most out of the actors and has the most dialogue. How he is not what I mean is he really has nothing to do with how the progression of the story goes. It's like they didn't even want to put too much effort into making a made-for-TV movie about environmental health. So he goes up there and he stands and he talks and tells the people that are worried about the environment to chill out a little. We have the whole planet to mess up. It'll be fine. But everything is not fine. She's always got one more tree up her sleeve, doesn't she? And she's the type of mom who could never say no. Dun dun dun, dramatic pose. Word. For heaven's sake, enough of this drivel! <laughs> what is this, Mardi Gras or Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade? Come on! Huh? Why, you arrogant little homo sapiens. Whoa, listen, lady, I separate my bottles from my bullshit, okay? Don't go tossing me in the same lot as these nards. You saw how easily led they were with some jack off in a purple suit. You don't know me. I'm not surprised. It's hard to recognize me anymore. Oh, once I was so fresh, so green. My skies were so blue, I was pristine. <laughs> That's the same face everyone around you was making while watching this program in the 1990s. I'm Mother Earth, and I'm sick. And it's all your fault. Me? Why is it always my fault? Because you're gonna eventually make RV, that's why. So, Mother Earth has had enough of every man and his ignorance. She is on the breaking point, unable to take any abuse any longer. You know, for a long time, I was all right. But then came the Industrial Revolution, and that damned assembly line, and mass production, and everything changed. The pace of life picked up. That's the size of the chemicals, and the, and the disposable this, and the disposable... You need to take a hit off of that smokestack down there and calm the fuck down a minute. Come on! I mean, it's all for the better. Wonderful things, cars, electric toothbrushes, mama hand can get real tired. You know, it kind of sounds like uh, every man is trying to suggest torturing and slowly killing someone is okay as long as it eases his life a little. Speed, kill, consume. Is that what you call living? No, that's what I call riding shotgun with Vince Neil. You don't cherish the life that surrounds you. She's definitely talking about Vince Neil. 
Mama, is it the hole in the ozone? Wear a hat. Come on. <laughs> you don't understand, honey. I will survive. I'm just a rock floating around in space. It's you I'm worried about. <coughs> Mama? <coughs> Come on. Come I on. Can't. What did a biplane fly in her mouth? The pesticides and the chemicals and the disposable this and the disposable this. <coughs> Mama. <coughs> Mama! That's some top notch acting. So Mother Earth flops to the ground like a drunk ant that downed too much barefoot at a wedding, and everybody in town comes out and stares at the body. Don't everybody go check on her all at once. Mama? Murphy Brown is outside the hospital reporting for what looks like to be Al-Qaeda news? Her lungs are congested. <gasps> Doogie! Oxygen. Okay. This is my oxygen. Images of all these bad things that we did to mommy's space rocks come flashing past our eyes like sins on our way to hell. That's what, it, that's what this movie feels like, like going to hell. This is my hell. Strange. That's also the combined weight of every resident in every state that voted for Donald Trump. I wonder if there's a connection. So after all that information about Mother Earth's condition, Murphy Brown notices that Carl Sagan is about to take the podium. In the air, there is a kind of invisible blanket of gases that keeps the heat in, makes the temperature of the Earth higher than, uh, than it would otherwise be. That's called the greenhouse effect. And uh, one of the most important gases that make the greenhouse effect go is carbon dioxide, CO2. It comes from... I suddenly want Arby's. The dirty filter on the camera is getting a bit much, guys. I give you two to one, she bites it. You know, Vic, you're so uninformed. If she bites it, we all bite it. Yeah, but you two can especially bite it. Bite it hard. Let me have a clicker over here. Why? Just want to turn up the volume. Hmm. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. All right. And you're a dick. Double jeopardy round in this round. I'll take ozone depletion for 200, Alex. The answer is, each 1% drop in ozone concentration is said to cause a 4% increase in cases of this disease. What is I don't give a shit? You're right, you get to pay. Hey, you want to try another category? You know, no one likes a sore winner, Paula. Yeah, well, no one likes a polluter either. So Carly gets the remote again and changes the channel back to the special. Near Town Square, where Mother Earth fell, we see downtown Julie Brown getting ready to do an interview. Glad they didn't get doom and gloom Murphy to scare the shit out of whoever she's going to talk to next. Joining us now is Dr. Elon Spengler. Wait, what? Brother of renowned Ghostbuster Dr. Egon Spengler and president of Wastebusters. Okay, whatever. Maybe they didn't have the rights to use the character Egon from Ghostbusters. Maybe they thought it would be funny to call him Elon for some dumbass reason. Dr. Spengler, can you tell us why you're here tonight? Yes, I can, Julie. <sighs> Somebody jiggle the mouse. Will you? Yes. Our job at Wastebusters is to identify industrial polluters, track them down, and humiliate them. So you're a troll? Interesting. I've got one. Oh, is that my bullshitometer going off? At that moment, Nathaniel Thurm, played by Martin Short, a highly strung spokesperson of a corporation that uses unregulated chemicals, comes walking past them, which causes Elon's beeper to go off. <laughs> Whoa, did you see that? Nathan was nearly mauled by a baby. Uh-oh, but the toddler attack cost him time, and he's cornered seconds later in a doorway by Elon. You are Nathan Thurm. I know that. You don't think I know that? It's my name. I would know that. And you are legal counsel and spokesperson for Diversified Industries? No, I'm not. Your name is on the letterhead. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. I have it right here. Would you like to read it? You read it. I have read it. Then why should I have to read it? Because it's your letterhead. Does he really have to read that? Are you sure we're after the same goals here at the moment? Is it me or is it him? It's him, isn't it? 
Mr. Thurm. As we see Elon go into full environmental inquisition fueled by some pent-up nerd rage, the only interesting thing about this scene is how long can Martin Short's cigarette ash actually grow before it falls off? I didn't say that. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. You think I did? I know you did. I know that. Elon eventually gets Nathan so flustered he has to implement the infamous look-behind-you escape tactic, allowing himself enough time to escape into the doorway behind them. Back at the hospital, the puss from Sidekicks, Chibi Blossom, and young Dracula clomp up the steps dressed like some live-action characters from an episode of Doug, when they are suddenly stopped by what appears to be too much whipped marshmallow poured into a suit. Oh, do you expect to slow down global warming with these three crummy little trees? They're saplings. You kids are saps. Look, you look like smart kids, okay? What causes a hole in the ozone? What are you, the keeper of the bridge? Let us the fuck in, you stupid pig! Oh. Leaky car air conditioners? Right. Fossil burning fuels? Correct the mundo. Less ozone, hotter earth. Hotter earth, more air conditioning needed. More air conditioning, less ozone. Bingo, hotter earth. My blood type is coffee cake. I have no bone structure. This voice reminds children that hate exists. Bingo, I'm the most annoying character in the fucking movie. It's an endless cycle, kids. Forget it. They could have replaced this character with a locked fucking door, and it would have still been the same exact scene. But then we wouldn't have gotten the clumpy goodness that is Rick to come in. So thanks, Rick. Oh, just, just quit whining and give me the trees, okay? Global warming, ozone depletion. Kids ever heard of marbles? That's all I had. Ha <laughs> did you hear me tell those kids that they were saps because they were holding tiny trees? Fuck these things. Wow, that was some unstable fertilizer. A familiar-looking DeLorean rolls into existence at the street below, covered in low-budget. Great Scott! What? Not good! No, Doc, he said what because he's now deaf from that sonic boom he just produced exiting through fucking time. Vic! Ugh, Jesus Christ, are we going back to these people bitching at each other? Hasn't it been a few minutes, Vic? Weren't you doing something earlier, or have we forgotten that little plot hole? Back at the hospital, Murphy Brown is bitching about Doc's entrance making her shit up the back of her pantsuit or something, while Doc goes racing into Mother Earth's hospital room only to be stopped at the door by Waluigi. For what? For what? To soothe her, comfort her, whatever it takes. Nurse, give me security right away. Oh, I'm sorry, Mario. Is the princess in another castle? Still beautiful despite what we've done to her. Oh, gross. Doc is getting turned on. Don't get too close, Doc. That mustache looks alarmed and may tighten its grip on his nose if provoked. Give me security right away. Wait! There's much to learn. I'm here to help you. Give me your tie, quick. I've got to do all this smack before the narc with the stash calls the pigs. So while Edward James, almost a good actor, tries to kick out Doc for being a crazy, because if you knew who he was, you would think so too, Doc warns of a grim future about to befall Earth. Jesus, laptops were a little less user-friendly then. Doc Brown has brought a presentation of his travels on his suitcase filled with pinball machine parts and choppy blue screen effect, showing footage of every day on my street. Me to believe this is the future? After all this shit happening, this is what you find unbelievable. You know, the 420 rally was a few days ago. I think you missed it. No, this is a present. I've been to the future. It's not that good. What are we gonna do? You know what you are, buddy? An alarmist in a crackpot. Uh-oh, is anyone getting that uh, mankind pulling out Socko moment kind of feeling with Doc and Doogie's tie? What if I'm not? What if I'm right? And you were a man who couldn't understand the danger he was in. Yeah, in danger of suffocation. Look at that thing. How the hell can he breathe with it weighing down his face like that? So, 
Doc has to leave to find the solution to the problems for Mother Earth. In what appears to be the same universe as Carla and Vix, the Golden Girls are all sitting around their house watching the same Earth Day special on television, too. Come on, doesn't this show get you thinking? Yeah, about dinner. I'll say, after one of their guacamole burgers, I'm not safe around an open flame. Oh, Ma, that's <laughs> not it. Well, that's part of it. You did kill those three people that were sitting behind us in that booth when they lit that cigarette. But the point is, somebody should tell Burgers by Leroy that the polystyrene foam that they pack their food in is completely non-biodegradable. Non-biodegradable? Feed that old bitch an avocado. These bastards must pay. Well, after watching this, I'm determined to start doing something to help. Oh, sure. We're determined now, but what about in two days? Or in two weeks? Will we still be determined to save our planet then? I have hormone injections that take first priority. <sighs> Carl Sagan is still at the podium discussing problems that are already occurring around the planet, but can be easily dealt with, like acid rain, by having our industries and governments start playing a bigger role in providing cleaner alternatives. Molecules don't have... Smooth. And now... Weekend update with anchor person Dennis Miller. <sighs> this asshole starts talking about the biodegradability of the new set and how much waste us Americans produce every year. The EPA reports this week that the United States produces over 300 million tons of toxic waste each year. That's more than one ton of waste per every man, woman, and child. And I better get busy here. It is already April, and I've only produced about six pounds of it myself. Yeah, when your brain fell out of your ass. Next. So Carly gets the remote again and changes the channel back to the Earth Day special. I sure hope Doc gets back here soon. Dr. Hauser, if that man comes back into this room, I'm holding you personally responsible. Wah, wah. Good! Very good! What's good? The parking in the waiting room. It's usually packed this time of day. Oh, cool. Back already. So what did you discover, Doc? Where did your journey through time take you? It began with a drink from the mighty Mississippi River. It was the year 1631. The water was so clean, so pure, and suddenly it was 1900 and I found myself in a little town nestled in a broad basin, surrounded by beautiful snow-capped mountains and breathtaking blue sky. It was something that none of us will ever have a chance to see again. What were you looking at? Los Angeles. My journey carried me through time, to Asia, Africa, Europe, seeing how the world used to be and how it has become, but always looking for the solution. Where was I going to find it? I needed to think, so I stepped into a little cafe in Kathmandu to read a newspaper from home. And suddenly, it hit me. I knew where to find the solution. It was in the most exhilarating, exciting, enlightening place I've ever been in my life. It's a place all of you must visit. Where? The library. So let me get this straight. Okay? Even though he has a time machine, which makes time irrelevant, and would only have been gone a second in our minds, Doc spends time drinking from a river sitting in a cafe in Kathmandu, and visiting pre-industrial revolution Los Angeles for The View? I gotta go. I left my dog Einstein back in 1951. Bye, thanks for the pile of paper we already had and knew, and pretty sure at least a million other people were actively doing it at this time around the world. The setting changes to a swamp, where Kermit the Frog, voiced by habitual puppet fister Jim Henson, appears with his nephew, Robin, and the rest of his super fucking annoying spawn that sit around watching the Earth Day special on television. You know, it sure gets pretty good reception here in the swamp. Huh, Robin? Yeah, especially now that they've got cable. Mm. We got it to watch the Gator Bowl. Shut up, Clarence. Hey, Uncle Kermit, this Earth Day show makes it look like things are pretty bad for the people. Yeah. Well, actually, it's worse for the animals. The Earth Day program is making Robin worry about what's happening to the Earth, sparking dialogue between the animals as they realize that some of them aren't around anymore due to the mismanagement of humans with the environment. I don't know, I'm not really paying attention because I'm too busy being severely annoyed by the dumbass background puppets repeating every other word that Kermit and Robin are saying. And the only thing I really learned from this entire experience of watching a bunch of Muppets talk about how shitty their situation is as animals, if you glue a wig on a frog puppet, it instantly becomes a Fraggle from Fraggle Rock. We cut to every man wandering around a corner bistro with a cup of coffee looking for a place to sit when we meet every lawyer, 
played by Dustin Hoffman, reading a newspaper at the table with an open chair. Who do you represent? People. What people? What do you think of what's going on around here? Well, nice segue. I'm a little concerned. About what? Well, to begin with, the oceans are polluted. What's the oil slicks? Yeah, that's yeah. it. What's your name again? Every man. Every man. Did you ever see an oil slick? Oh, well, just on TV. Yeah, but not personally. No. Every man. Yeah. You know a lot of people. Well, yes, I do. Ever spoken to anybody that's seen an oil slick? No. Must be a lot of ocean that doesn't have oil slicks. Yeah, right? I guess, yeah. So what's the problem? The fact that they exist should be enough to call it a problem, Dustin. What about the fish, though? If they're anything like those frogs, fuck them. Let's take your worst case scenario. Okay. Let's say all the fish in the world are poisoned. Really? Dead. You can't eat them anymore. Yeah. Nobody will be able to eat fish. All right. You ever taste imitation crab meat? Once, yeah. Isn't it delicious? Okay, I'm not even sure where this is going anymore. Does every lawyer expect every man to believe having no sea life in the oceans is okay because we have imitation crab? We have imitation tuna, imitation swordfish, imitation wahoo. They imitation wahoo? Not yet. Oh, really? But if they pollute all the oceans, they'll start working on them. <laughs> What's your name again? Every man. Every man. Yeah, it's almost exactly like yours. Kind of weird that you forgot that. Well, if they, if, they, if you what got What else the, is bothering well, you? Well, polar ice caps are melting. That's something So about. what? What do you mean? So they're melting. So you won't see them anymore. Yeah. They're in National Geographic. Really? Okay, these things no normal human being would ever say to someone in hopes of making someone else believe they were right. This is the kind of shit that a 10-year-old would say when they wanted to be annoying on purpose. Well, there's no. But there's a hole in the ozone. There's a hole in the ozone. Right, if that ozone, you have a hole in it, then those ultraviolet light gets through, and then you have your skin cancer. You never heard of sunscreen? No. <laughs> you can't Bingo. put on a little 15 or 22. What, are you a baby? No. If it's really bad, you put on 32, 42. 42? If it's that bad during the day, zinc oxide blocks it. Right, yeah. you put that zinc oxide on, you look You're like worried. a mime. Or just cover yourself in lead paint. No ultraviolet rays will get in there. Or better yet, use Crisco. That way when you burn to death, it gives the last of us something to eat besides imitation crab when the fucking ocean is dead. All right, in the ozone. What's your name? Every man. Like your name, every lawyer, only every man. God Fucking damn it, how hard is this? The atmosphere is polluted. The it's... atmosphere is very bad. It is a big problem. Well, you can't breathe sometimes, it burns. You bet your life, it mm. hurts your lungs. Boy, it it's does. It's yellow out there. Oh, brown, that's On brown. those days, you stay inside. I was almost thinking he was going to say something like, stick your head in a plastic bag because it'll keep all the bad air out. How the fuck do you not see this asshole is completely wrong at everything he just said? Photosynthesis. Yes. Photosynthesis. Say it again. That old saw. That's it. What, what, that old saw? What do you mean? What is photosynthesis? Well, that's why we breathe out carbon dioxide, then they give us back Don't tell me what. I know what photosynthesis is. I'm, I'm not asking you what photosynthesis I'm telling you that photos. The, the jury is out on photosynthesis. What are you talking photosynthesis about? Photosynthesis can be argued both ways. Well, wait, we need plants and flowers. Yeah, well, let me tell you something. Plants and flowers in the wrong hands is a dangerous thing. And you're living in the best country in the world. Where are you living? America. That's right, because you elect the people you want to represent you. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Liars? Would they just pass the new Clean Air and Water Bill? Act? Right. They spent months working on it. Oh, they bill, did, boy. Mm -hmm. Was this long? Mm -hmm. Longer. They, they beat it up a little bit, a little didn't bit, they? Yeah. Punched holes in it. Yeah, compromised. Yeah. Compromised. Oh, it. you mean found loopholes to make money and extorted a little more. The lobbyists. The lobbyists work for? Special interest groups. Special interest groups serve? The corporations. And who are the corporations? Well, executives and then lawyers. Like people. Like you. What are you worried about? I don't know. I mean, after what I've heard today and all I've seen, it, I'm, I don't buy it. Oh, thank God. You aren't as stupid as you look. Well, the, the atmosphere, the ozone, rainforest, hey, low ice caps. I can always argue the other side. Has anyone seen my grandson? He's blonde and kind of bitchy looking. Looks like that little puss from the movie Sidekicks. Doogie and the hospital director discuss what might happen if they try to fix Mother Earth from the solutions that were presented in the findings from Doc Brown. The hospital director suggests to hold off treating Mother Earth until they can evaluate problems further, as the solutions could hurt the economy. And solutions cost money and can raise the price of products. Yeah, because it's going to be so much cheaper in hell when you're all dead. Your economy could suffer. You willing to take that responsibility? The price of mustache wax could go through the roof. How would you feel then? I think you worry a little bit too much, Dr. Hauser. Well, there's a lot tougher than you think. I saw that bitch take a punch in the face once, barely even phased her. Turned her on is what it did. 
She'll be fine. I'm sorry. That's just about the scariest thing ever. Waking up in a hospital with a doctor standing over you going, I'm sorry, before walking away. The fuck, Doogie? So Mother Earth decides that the humans need one more helping hand and uses what little power she has left to signal the stagehand to turn on the fan off screen and blow the folder with the papers out the window. Isn't this technically masochism? I mean, come on, she's littering. The papers land in a mysteriously placed junk heap that litters the alleyway below under her hospital room window. Michael Jackson? He wasn't in the beginning credits! Holy shit, it's actually E.T. Well, I mean, sort of. I don't remember E.T. looking so... kindergarten nap mat material. And how did Mother Earth know E.T. was going to be standing in some junk pile under her hospital window? Global warming? Deforestation? Ice caps melting? An eraser come dumpsters through! Oh, that was mine. While looking over the information in the papers, E.T. hears the children that were delivering the small trees to Mother Earth from before, now accompanied by- Rubio! 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 Ah! We didn't know what to do about it. <laughs> oh my god, he looks like a turtle orgasming. I don't care how nice and lovable he is. Stop smiling like that. It's giving me the creeps. How to skin and clean a human being for dummies. Oh, this was how the last Harry Potter book was created. So the kids come in for a closer look as E.T. lures them in with a glowing book like gnats to a bug zapper. For you, people of Earth. Okay, no, that didn't happen. The camera just fades to black. But seriously, ET2 Nocturnal Fears totally needs to happen.